if you're using Flutterflow for building any type of web app, you're going to need to master the art of responsive views. That is what this video is all about. Right, so this is Statista. It's a pretty reputable source of information on the internet. Um, now as you'll see, the percentage of traffic on the web for mobile devices has been going up and up and up and currently sits at about 55%. So if you're building any kind of app that's web-based uh, and not native mobile-based, you have to be thinking about mobile and probably mobile first. But certainly if you're into search engine optimization, Google definitely looks at mobile first and mobile performance. So let's get into that because there's a couple of ways you can do this in Flutterflow. Uh, and if the sight of custom actions and SQL functions makes you shudder, you'll be happy to know there's none of that. This is purely dealing with whatever we're given in Flutterflow for creating user interfaces. Right, this is my job board app, uh, which you've seen in a few videos. I'm building it up. I actually am going to, I am going to deploy this uh, when it's finished. I do have a niche that I think it could work in, so I'm going to see how that goes. I'll probably report on that. Now, this is the search results. So if you remember back to the search video, when we did the um, search in a super base table. This is the results page that I'm setting up. And as you can see, I've got two different two different views. That's my mobile view. And that is my web based view. And then the tablet view uses the same as the as the web one. Sorry, yes, as the web one, right. Now, we're going to go through a couple of ways of dealing with this. One is essentially conditional um conditional visibility so therefore if we are on web full size screen show x and if we're on a mobile device show y and then the other one we can use the stack widget and sort of essentially make our page our items our widgets respond to go vertical instead of horizontal in the widget right this is a grid view on and we've got each one of these is a container as you can see, and we are bringing in the, the information we need to show what the user searches for. Now then, basically, so if we go to our grid view on the right hand side there, again, you apologies if you've seen this before, but you know, some people haven't. We on our responsive options, what we're doing here, we're controlling whether it's visible in different screens. So what we're saying is this particular widget which is the grid view we are only showing in large screens like desktops laptops and on tablets and then on tablet portrait we're not showing it and on phone we're not showing it because this isn't responsive and it just the grid view isn't responsive and it just doesn't work now the one reason I'm using the job board app as a example is because I have a my part of my theory of this is that it's kind of you've got two elements this because if you're doing a b2b app business to business chances are the people that are going to be using that are probably going to be using it on a big screen on a laptop or a desktop because they're doing it at work if you're doing a b2c app uh, as in you know business to consumer the chances are they're going to be looking at it on the phone on the train at home whatever they're doing so the job board i think in certainly in my experience and also just from my feeling is that you're going to have two elements this is that the people that are posting jobs are going to be doing it from big screens from laptops and desktops and the people that or predominantly they are anyway and the people that are reviewing jobs and scrolling through and applying for jobs are most likely going to be doing it on mobile so the users are going to be using doing it on mobile the people that are posting the jobs are more likely to be doing it on on a on a bigger screen that's my theory so i've made this so it works in every direction in both ways so if you're if you're posting jobs it works just as easily in um mobile as it does on the big screen and likewise the other way around if you're viewing them uh, however some of the things i have kept it so it only really looks good on the smaller screen it doesn't look great on the big screen but they're just minor they're just minor elements to the app but that's not this about this is about making it making it um, responsive. So 
we have the grid view, like I say, we've got it visible on large screens. Then if we go to the phone option at the top, then we switch to the phone view, we still got the grid view selected. And as you can see, it's not visible, obviously, so nothing's changed, but we don't want that. If we just click on one of these, so it takes it to the right place. On the mobile side, I have done a swipeable stack. And as you can see, it's visible on phone and tablet portrait, but not visible on big screens. So this is one way of doing it. Essentially, you swap your widgets out. Now, the disadvantage of this is that all your actions, such as we've got, um, if we go onto the button there, essentially that's just a navigate button and we pass a load of parameters. And then if you watched the video on favorites, you'll have seen this already. That is our actions for adding and removing favorites uh, from our users list. The downside of this is that you have to double up on your action so therefore those buttons have to be recreated in both views but that's one way of doing it so essentially we swap out a widget that works well on a big page but make it not visible in our smaller view to one that works on our smaller smaller page and what I've done with this particular one again if we just click on there find to the swap stack I have made it so the um, it goes on a loop so rather than they just disappear and not come back when they get to the end of the list it just keeps going round and round and that's how I've got round on this one so that's one way of doing it and the other way to do it is with the wrap widget which is what we're going to look at now so if we go to the employers home page this is the employer home page there you know where you get their details they've got all their listings that they want to uh, that they've currently got posted they have got their messages ie their app job applications and that's what they've got on that page so if we put it on the big screen yeah. what we have got is a wrap widget with three columns and these columns widths are uh, so the, the containers so if I go to the container I have set the width to 370 and that ties in with our 393 pixel width on the um, on the standard phone screen when I'm using I'll come to that in a second um, and it gives us a bit of border either side so each of our each of our containers in these columns is essentially a screen wide if you're using mobile and then what happens is when you switch from mobile to big screen they stack for essentially from left to right so that one be at the top that one be in the middle that one be at the bottom you can have four five six obviously but obviously you don't want to go too wide that they don't fit on your big screen so that's why i've done it this way and then just another note on the the containers while i'm at it which is not related to the um responsiveness of them is that at the height wise I've got them as infinite so essentially because the company bio is could have up to 500 characters um, so obviously that will expand or contract depending on how much people do and likewise how many listings they've got how many messages I've set the messages to a maximum number so the it won't expand too much and then you have to go to inbox to view them all so just a bit of an aside there but you'll notice on the wrap widget that it is visible in every screen type so it's visible tablet landscape portrait and mobile and like I say all that happens is the wrap widget will stack so the only thing you need to watch out with this is make sure you're sort of keeping your um, padding consistent on all of your on all of your columns because they do if if they're not consistently the same across left to right they will sort of not quite align when you go to mobile view and um you'll have one slightly left one slightly right and if you haven't you if you use different amounts of padding so that's something to watch 
Uh, just an aside, this will not be called Awesome Jobs. I couldn't think of a name for it. I haven't yet thought of a name for it. Um, but just, you know, just if you're thinking, why are you calling your, your job board Awesome Jobs? That's terrible. Yes, it is. It's just I haven't thought of a proper name for it yet. Anyway, that's by the by. So um, the other thing you need to note is if you right click on your phone screens at the top, um, these are the options. So I am currently building for a 14 Pro. Um, why am I doing that? I think sort of that size, the 13. 13, 14, 15 are probably most popular. And as you can see, it's pretty much going to work on most devices if you do that anyway, apart from maybe the iPhone mini, which I think I see up there somewhere. Even that's 375, so we're going below that. So I'm keeping my, I'm keeping my um, containers below the mini just about. Um, I mean, I've, to be even being honest, I don't know what that is. Most people within the iPhone and Samsung, Samsung world so that's kind of what I'm building for and there will be some outliers but hopefully by keeping those just about narrow enough so they fill this screen but don't overflow hopefully on too many screens again that's something I'll have to test before I send this out into the world on, on actual devices so that's really mostly what there is to it it's, it's, it's not particularly complicated I'm afraid there's not much to this one it's just a case of these are the two ways to do it. Use a responsive widget, which is our wrap widget, or make your widgets conditionally visible depending on your screen size. The only other thing, finally, before I sign off, is you need to consider what you're putting in the top because when you go to mobile, obviously it compresses. So if we go back to employer home again, if I was to put something in there, in fact, let's do that. Let's put a, what do we got there? We're in a row. So if we put a column in the middle somewhere and let's put a, let's put the search button in there. There you go. So we've got, let's assume we have search button or post job button up in the top here and then we go to mobile it doesn't really work very well that's just something you need to watch out for when you are filling up the top of your when you fill up the top of your screen with um with items in your for your menus and your logos and whatever you want to do up there just bear in mind that when the screen changes you need to make sure they're all going to fit which is why i've just left it with the menu icon and the, and the logo so yeah that's it hopefully that's helpful i know this is something that i've seen posted on reddit whatever where people are asking the question how to do responsive this is the two ways the two easiest ways of doing it that i know of and say oh, they're the ones i'm currently using and they work absolutely fine Doubling up on your widgets is not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. When you copy and paste, you do have to re-assign um, some of the sort of uh, some of the sources of the data within your backend calls, which you have to do with any time you copy and paste something anyway. So that's just you know the way it is. And then truly responsive element, because ultimately you can't, in my opinion, call replacing every widget for different screen types responsive that's just building two different uh, two different views of the same thing um but the only you know the the wrap being an actual responsive element that we're using in the um in the, in the job seekers and the employers home that's a responsive element so the only thing i'd be careful of is the order you want them to be in and if for instance these are set because they're infinite if they're not set for infinite you just want to again make sure that your padding is correct so they stack correctly and don't look a bit weird with massive gaps in which i've had when i've been playing about with different things so so that's all there is to it it's not particularly complicated this one um but hopefully that is something you can take away and use in your projects and if that is please consider a like and a subscribe because it massively helps small channel like this and i will speak to you next time